see the vaccine is not a sure shot all we have is as you said promises and candidates so most of the candidates are promises are based on in vitro or early experiments or some animal experiments when it reaches to people it becomes very different story because that is when the trials begin and 85% of the vaccine fail in stage 3 trials sometime it be even more dangerous this time we are lucky that it is so less uh, symptomatic and most people are uh, getting off uh, relatively easy but uh, it could be worse than this vaccine is essentially helping the immune system experience and fight the disease uh, uh, as and when it comes so that means it's not a drug that it will go and work on its own it takes help of the body and that's how it works having said that this doesn't mean that we will never have a vaccine uh, we it, it has never happened in the history that so much of money and effort has been put against one virus and i think country like india should be more strongly positioned in terms of uh, expertise facilities and science base otherwise we will not be able to manage or even uh, do the basics uh, against such uh, pandemics or disease situation expecting a vaccine in half a year or one year is a bit of a, 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 a over ambitious if we are extremely lucky maybe end of the year some good uh, promises will come right now there are promises they will become a good promise we should be ready to fight this pandemic without vaccine if only we had the information uh, and the relationship of which genome uh, owner will respond and which will not respond so you can now save 50% of the money in the chemotherapy i personally don't think a major setback for the science because of the temporary shortage of uh, funding in a educated society it is simply ridiculous to uh, to go through this kind of process somebody is got covid i consider that guy is a hero we should tell people that there is no drug there is no vaccine the chance of having vaccine for uh, some time is very very slim i don't know if there is otherwise a single formula that we should all go do this or do Uh, I welcome you to into their minds at into their minds we're trying to build this platform where we have this sort of active discussions and uh, interview a few personalities who are contributing to the society uh, in their respective fields and in this new season we focus more on um, getting to our audience a uh, few personalities who are uh, you know contributing directly to the current pandemic situation so it's my pleasure having you with me today and uh, with that being said i would like to start with rather an important question today about the status of the pandemic uh, with a lot of misinformation that's already around it's quite hard for someone to make up their mind uh, about the status of the pandemic so what according to you is the status of the pandemic professor mishra so where do you think we are are we at the end of this pandemic uh, situation or i mean nobody can give a specific answer about this but uh, what according to you is you know so we are no way uh, anywhere near the end of the pandemic uh, one thing is uh, certain there are many uncertainties but this is uh, certain and uh, when we are going to cross the uh, high and uh, what we call as the peak and then plateau and then come down is also at uh, the moment uncertain there are theoretical models for that based on the data but as we are know for variety of reasons Uh, mainly for technical and resource reasons the data is not that strong that we can make a model which is uh, very reliable uh, for most of the city for certain cities there may be little better uh, data situation and uh, this data means number of people being tested and uh, and so on so uh, based on all these people are thinking september end but remember the peak and plateau comes only when you do something if you don't do something that they will not come they will keep going up and the 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 overall trend average if you see it shows that things are uh, going up so the uh, the pandemic is very much on it is becoming worse but the good thing is that the virus is asymptomatic in most cases so there is a big help from that so many people don't need hospital assistance immediately but if you go beyond a point if beyond a point certain numbers increase then there will be crowd at the hospital and that's the something which uh, is i think the effort of everybody to prevent yeah 
So I would also like to talk about another big question about the recent developments of uh, ICMR CCMB. So a group of 239 international scientists from across 32 countries had claimed that the virus is airborne, requesting the World Health Organization to, you know, revi uh, revise its rules when it comes to social distancing. So currently CSIR uh, has started a study to explore the possibility of airborne transmission of coronavirus. Uh, can you talk more about the study and the investigation done? So we have the studies yet to begin. We have decided that at two places we are going to do it in Hyderabad and in Chandigarh. And uh, so we have planned things. We are waiting for certain specific uh, components, uh, which we call as filters of a specific kind for the air sampling. And a, any day it should begin in a week or something. Uh, the idea here is that you collect uh, the air samples at different distance in different contexts, whether it's in a ward where the COVID patients are there or in a uh, crowded place or in a, let's say bank or various kinds of things. So first we are going to do sampling in different hospital settings, uh, uh, OPDs or uh, different places just to see that how safe healthcare workers are and where they can get out of their PPE or uh, mask and those sort of kinds of things. So this should not be very difficult. Once we begin, then we can uh, arrive at conclusion within uh, a week or, or 10 days because those are fast experiments to do. Just number of sampling is what is the uh, key thing. But uh, the, the reason we got into this is that there was very good study that showed that the virus can go in uh, small particles, uh, uh, small droplets which can hang in air if undisturbed for uh, uh, half an hour or more. So which means that if you are in a closed room, closed environment, uh, no airflow, then uh, if person comes to you and speaks uh, and sneezes or something uh, without mask and goes back, then for half an hour or one hour, there may be virus particles floating around because the big droplet will settle down, but these will take longer time to settle down. So one has to, distance is one thing of course, but the more important is the closed environment. So if you are in a closed room or closed hall, then it is best to have the air flow so that the air is exchanged and those droplets, uh, uh, if somebody emits, they are gone out. Because unlike a real assumption, they are not just immediately going to fall down and uh, not hang in the air for some time. So this also doesn't mean that it is a real truly an airborne, which means the air is polluted and uh, wherever you go will get infected and it's not like that you require thousand or more particles to come in and it takes a, a decent amount of exposure so if a distance of a meter or two i mean a couple of meters is maintained and mask is properly uh, there in the all the people then we are pretty safe it's not uh, uh, so difficult i see yeah, so Dr. Mishra, as we were just talking, there's something almost everybody in this world is looking forward right now, then it's the vaccine to the current situation, uh, pandemic situation. It has become the question of our times. There's a lot of promises being made uh, about many vaccines being in the final stages of human trials and the pos possibility of them hitting the markets in a couple of days. At the same time, there's a bunch of vaccines that are just still getting into animal trials and uh, perhaps a couple of years ahead of being available. And uh, even if we have a vaccine by the end of this year, what are we looking at with respect to the efficacy of that vaccine and what should we be prepared for Dr. Mishra? See the vaccine is not a sure shot. All we have is as you said promises and candidates. This mm -hmm. doesn't much. That's why there is a trial and uh, all those things. So most of the candidates are, uh, are, are uh, promises are based on in vitro or early experiments or uh, some animal experiments when it reaches to people it becomes very different story because that is when trials begin and 85 percent of the vaccine fail in stage three trials because stage one and two is a uh, safety trial generally but the efficacy and robustness of vaccine depends on how many people uh, uh, can get protection what percent of people get protection different uh, ethnic groups different age group different uh, health conditions uh, because vaccine is essentially helping the immune system experience and fight the disease uh, uh, as and when it comes. So that means it's not a drug that it will go and work on its own. It takes help of the body and that's how it works. 
so it is not that predictable there are large number of diseases for which we have no vaccine i mean hiv is one of them is a, uh, uh, which has been one of the best studied viral infection with all the modern tools but we don't have any vaccine uh, till today similarly there are diseases like malaria and all the major killer there is no proper vaccine in fact there is no good vaccine against any corona virus uh, till now so uh, having said that this doesn't mean that we will never have a vaccine uh, mm-hmm. we it has never happened in the history that so much of money and effort has been put against one virus and uh, and vaccine i mean how many billions of dollars are pumped into this with the latest technology so there is a hope but how good the vaccine will be only test will tell that is it's really true that time will tell nothing can be there is no way of predicting a vaccine uh, how good and how robust is going to be earliest we have had the vaccine earlier was 4 uh, years uh, in the fastest time so uh, expecting a vaccine in half a year or one year is a bit of a, 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 a over ambitious target but as i said theoretically uh, one shouldn't rule out one can keep hope but one should not depend on this so my only uh, comment here will be that we cannot depend and plan based on vaccine if it comes wonderful we will have a great tool in hand but we should be prepared that if there is no vaccine which is not a negligible chance there is a, uh, it is tough to get vaccine unlike drug which you would give to sick person and sick person recovers you can say drug is working in very simple term you vaccinate a person then wait for what the person not to get infected so whether person did not get infected because virus didn't come or something else happened or vaccine worked so it's very difficult to tell the efficacy of the vaccine uh, in a population unless you infect those people deliberately is called active active uh, testing but you cannot do that unless you have a drug against the the disease so if you don't have anything you cannot just go and inject virus in everybody and uh, so that is unethical so that is why testing of this vaccine against a new and uh, dangerous uh, infection is not easy part that's why it takes time and uh, so if we are extremely lucky maybe end of the year some good uh, promises will come right now there are promises they will become a good promise so you can start using but that doesn't mean it will provide protection but it is a, is a hope it will take quite some time when we start getting data vaccines are monitored for a long period of time then we'll figure out that okay it is more effective in children less effective in adult or more effective in old all those things will come so it's very very uncertain and we should uh, while keep working for trying to get a vaccine do lots of candidates trials new methods and all but uh, our preparation should be uh, that uh, we have to deal with this this pandemic without any vaccine with vaccine comes also will take couple of years to supply to people depending on what kind of vaccine what kind of cold chain it requires so it can be and So those who are investing billions of dollars they would want it to be given to their people first and not to the those who have just waited and not done anything so all these things come and then uh, if it is new product and particularly if it is rna based vaccine it's going to be very expensive and it will be because it will require cold chain and those things so uh, having a vaccine then uh, efficacy of the vaccine how robust and how good it is and then the availability of the vaccine all these three keep reducing the I hope for uh, uh, for common uh, uh, people. Yeah. Uh, so is it is very very difficult thing, and we should be ready to fight this pandemic without vaccine. Uh, all right. So as you were just mentioning, when we look back, the production of vaccines almost took you know, many years, if not decades. So what are the reasons for this vaccine to be able to be available this early, if at all? Uh, considering the p- promises being made if it's available in less than like a couple of years then w- what are the lessons major lessons that we have learned from previous exposure or previous vaccine developments uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not previous vaccine it's each vaccine is a new story what people are trying is to because of the pandemic nature you relax some of the rules so you relax them like you can do stage 1 and 2 trial uh, together or you can uh, maybe stage 3 normally you expect a certain period of time you can reduce that if nothing happens see the what will happen is that let, there is a vaccine which is not doing any harm to you mm-hmm. and if somebody is willing to invest money 
now vaccine is entering third stage trial other companies have already started production which means they are uh, gambling so they are going to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to produce large number uh, with the risk that vaccine may fail and they all have to throw it so that can happen but that is that's what will save time but in case it works then they are already there and another 6 months is not required for uh, large scale production so those are the shortcuts that pe- that uh, uh, that people are trying and uh, regulatory bodies can also uh, allow okay the vaccine doesn't show the great promise of uh, efficacy but it is uh, showing safe uh, you want you can inject and people want they can take and those sorts of things so some of those criteria will be lowered and that's why something which would have been otherwise failed may go on uh, but uh, that exactly means that you are not going to have the best product with these kind of you can have it earlier but that will not be the product uh, because there is no shortcut for a robust uh, uh, safe vaccine with a good efficacy there is no shortcut it requires the long term uh, monitoring and trial then only you can say yeah dr mishra sooner or later i believe there'll be a point where we have the vaccine and we'll somewhat go back to normalcy i'm sure it will leave a mark on everybody's lives in everyday activities um, you know uh, in some sort of consequences so but how concerned are you about the resilience of the scientific community if you ask me this has been a really uh, good overhaul for our way of thinking looking at the system and uh, by the way just to comment uh, we will get to normalcy without vaccine also is okay. that how we manage they is there is not uh, herd immunity will slowly k- kick in if we we are already able to manage it much better than somebody to get infected and cured now it has a far better chance than what 3 months ago because we have understood there are some uh, steroids that work and there are some other drugs that are coming they they may be helping little bit that little help uh, tilts the balance in favor so uh, this will happen there are more and more uh, help is coming around uh, so in few months uh, things will improve vaccine will be the greatest thing uh, in all this process but without that also we'll get to uh, some <laughs> normal or new normal whatever you call few lessons i would uh, uh, take from here is one is that uh, we are pushing the environment and that is why we are exposing ourselves to new dangers so mm-hmm. if we, uh, that we should take care there are very broad thing i mean we can debate uh, and comment on this for one hour but uh, the cause is coming from there if you go and uh, interfere with the nature beyond what you are uh, your natural rights to do you will get into new problems sometime mm-hmm. it will be even more dangerous this time we are lucky that it is so less uh, symptomatic and most people are uh, getting off uh, uh, relatively easy but uh, it could be worse than this so that is one second thing is country like india we realize that even for small components of this diagnostic there is no drug vaccine forget even for diagnosis everything we depended on uh, import uh, in a unified world where the, we start calling one word there is no border and uh, uh, a component of a phone comes from five different countries assembled in the sixth one those kind of thing but there are we should not go so much business and money mind that we forget the, the basics of that what if supply chain is blocked mm-hmm. then we are now in a new kind of dependency uh, then what kind of freedom we are talking about so it is extremely important and government has woken up uh, really well that we have to have certain things where we don't depend on others and is not uh, it, it was much better early on there was efforts making like uh, we say we have big pharma company big drug manufacturing in india is a power and all that the fact is not if uh, we don't get the uh, apis we don't get the starting material from somewhere else we cannot produce any of these drugs so that means we have lost capacity of certain things so that has to be built for diagnostics of this kind there should be in fact every city should have some kind of uh, independency uh, self sufficiency if not country uh, i mean of course country level we have to have that and uh, another important thing is that when a new problem comes who will solve your new problems mm-hmm. for which virus came for which there was no name we forget about any 
treatment for that. So you need to understand the virus. You need to understand uh, what it does to people. And then in this process, uh, you understand how it goes from one person to other. And then how it behaves in the body so that you can uh, uh, intervene uh, and come up with some cure. Mm. All this can come with only if you have good, strong, basic, uh, fundamental research base in the country. Otherwise, you can produce material, but you cannot be able, you will not be able to solve new problems, you will not be able to take new challenges, you have to wait for somebody else to make a kit, then you can start uh, training your healthcare worker and start using them. I think that is one lesson which uh, we have learned that we should have a strong science base, then only we will be able to handle pandemics of this kind. And uh, this is not going to be uh, solved by somebody else because uh, why we were not able to get even simple components is because it was required in Europe and America. So they will not supply anywhere else. It's a normal thing. We also banned supply of ventilators, the supply of many things because uh, we need for our people. Uh, mm -hmm. drug chloroquine was stopped from export. Uh, then some exemptions were made. Why it was stopped? Because if you supply to others, then what about your people? So it is very normal to explain. There is nothing wrong in that. So. I think country like India should be more strongly positioned in terms of uh, expertise, facilities and science base. Otherwise, we will not be able to manage or even uh, do the basics uh, against such uh, pandemics or disease situation. And this world is so mobile, so flexible, so uh, intermixing. This is going to happen uh, in future. And every 10 years, 8 years, we have been getting new virus, new things they were less uh, infectious. This one is uh, very smart in infection, weak in the otherwise. So uh, we can expect new kinds of problems because the way we are pushing the, uh, the wildlife uh, into a uh, back foot, uh, their uh, diseases will uh, jump out and some of them may make up to the people. So uh, I think uh, uh, the system, people and the scientists, they have understood that uh, we have to work differently and these kinds of things we should be ready. The other problem is whenever we are doing whatever we are doing, we have must see the need of the weaker section in mind. If we do not do it, we will reach into very big uh, messy situation. So for example, in this pandemic, one of the biggest thing that we have seen the misery and some of us cannot forget that how people have moved from big cities to small places out of fear, out of threat, and this has been uh, a very, very big damage here the civil society because these are the people who have been helping in the cities, running the industry. Now all of a sudden they are left to uh, nothing. Uh, even uh, it's uh, it's not that uh, they should be given food. They should they they should have their proper rights, and there should be technology. There should be uh, resource because they are the one because of which the cities are running, industry is running. So, uh, although we are shifting little bit uh, into social aspect, but the science has to keep in mind that you should have a technology which is applicable at mass level, not for the top 10% of the society. If we always keep thinking private hospitals, uh, Apollo, then all, there's nothing wrong in the Apollo. You need uh, those things and, and Apollo is not one. There are maybe 20 such uh, chains of hospitals. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, but they are only for 10-15% of the people, they are not for the rest. So, it is extremely important that the public uh, hospitals, public health care system has to be strengthened and as, as we see governments in various steps because no matter how good we are for the top 10%, if the remaining or weaker section is not taken, so science and technology has to keep that requirement in mind. If you do a test of this kind in 3000 rupees, we are doomed. We will not go very far. How, how we'll get money? Can mm -hmm. we do this test in 300 rupees? The sad thing is that we can it. There is no problem in doing the same test in 300 rupees. Then mm -hmm. why we are not doing? That's the question that the scientist and system should ask. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, it's possible. So these are the things that have woken us up. People are talking about producing quality manufacturing, then uh, supplying and using internally quality product. If we can send a rocket to moon around Mars and everywhere, we can do everything else. It's just that uh, thinking in that way, 
putting our priorities and the scientists have to work uh, uh, keeping this mind that what is effective for the society it has been awakening thing for uh, all of us and mm-hmm. in a way uh, is a, a, a may sound awkward but i think uh, this pandemic has done many thing good it has done a surgery uh, and uh, uh, removed the, the sluggish and comfort zone from our mind so that we can uh, think uh, what is the best use of our abilities and uh, how to position ourselves for better uh, health care or better condition for the large number of people and not just few people. So we were talking about how um, the mindset of scientists are to be changed with respect to uh, what we've learned from the current pandemic situation. Currently, many researchers are worried about the disruption and the progress of their work. Uh, and find it really hard to continue with their research activities because of uh, many reasons. For instance, they don't have, uh, I mean, they have lack of uh, resources. So what are your suggestions uh, for them on how to make use of this time back home? See, the, uh, I think uh, the science, uh, we, it is a general perception that you need resource to do science, which is true also. Yeah. But there is no reciprocal relationship uh, between resource and uh, science. As we say that necessity is the mother of invention. You can do things in a different ways. Uh, you can do many experiments uh, using cheaper reagents. May, I mean, the qualities publication sometimes our ideas or results come not by the best of the investments. And in fact, uh, if you do a very large calculation, it may appear a, 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 the other way around because uh, science has more recently, particularly in biology, has become more and more data uh, oriented. And there are people who have spent their lifetime generating data without analyzing and using that data. So it is nice to be on a little bit of a tight uh, uh, path. And uh, we should realize that the money is important for many other things. And uh, we should learn how to. Uh, do quality science with uh, lesser resources. There are some research that will require money. So that is where the system has to take care. For instance, if we are to understand, let's say, precision medicine, uh, that we want to treat our people based on what they need and not based on the trial done on a uh, some other population or something. Maybe a particular drug X, you require one gram, I require half a gram. Because you have a a better metabolism rate of that drug, I have slower metabolism rate. So this has to be checked and given uh, according to uh, our uh, physiological and our, in fact, our uh, end genomic uh, makeup. So for that, we have to generate a lot of data for our population so that uh, the whole idea is called uh, personalized and precision medicine. So it will require a huge amount of investment. So I give you one simple example. Today, chemotherapy is done without uh, taking help of uh, precision or personalized medicine approach. So any patient will be given the same drug uh, and half the time uh, these drugs don't work. Uh, they work in half the people, they were, don't work in half the people. So which means several lakhs of investment and more uh, important the, the, the person goes through the ill effects of the, of the drug for no gain. So, but if only we had the information uh, and the relationship of which genome uh, owner will respond and which will not respond, so you can now save 50% of the money in the chemotherapy. And uh, if you go and do calculation, how much, uh, what is the market of chemotherapy drug uh, today, uh, you will see uh, uh, impressive numbers. Mm-hmm. So, it will require initial investment. That's where the public investment or the government has to invest and their outcome then will be uh, for all to, to do. But for large number of uh, scientists, don't do heavy data related uh, research, like very few universities do data generation, they do more experimental of uh, uh, experiments of small kind. So I think in, by and large, we are not going to suffer. And I think uh, a shortage of funds should uh, make us uh, do things differently. And uh, idea is more important than uh, really the resource. They are required, they are useful. But I personally don't think a major setback for the science because of the temporary shortage of uh, funding that should function to stimulate some um, unexplored 
faculties that we have in various aspects of research activity. Mm. Yeah. So, Dr. Mishra, misinformation. Today it is quite common to come across some sort of misinformation these days, uh, maybe through uh, some false articles or like fake WhatsApp messages. So, with a lot of challenges already present during times like this, from surveillance to lockdowns to vaccines, some experts believe that the biggest challenge is the one with uh, misinformation. Do you agree with this? And if so, how important do you think it is for a scientist to ally the fears of the public? No, oh, it is. In fact, uh, the people will look uh, 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 at the scientific community for this. Uh, they are not going to get information from a politician or administrator or uh, newspapers or news persons. It has to come from scientists. Okay. So, scientists or academic institutions have the fundamental responsibility. That's why I uh, uh, I keep saying that it's our job to uh, to uh, study learn, discuss and inform people, inform politicians, inform policy makers, inform press, inform media and inform general public what we know, what we do not know. You may have come across that if somebody died of COVID, that person, that dead body cannot be taken to the village, they cannot be cremated, they cannot be... These are in a educated society, it is simply ridiculous to, uh, to go through this kind of process. I mean, somebody has gone through such a loss, their life has been lost. Don't we know that this virus is spread by uh, uh, sneeze, breathe and this way. When the dead person is not uh, breathing, where even it may be full of virus, it will not, virus doesn't crawl, it doesn't have wings, it doesn't have anything. So unless it's pushed it from inside the body, it will not come out. Mm -hmm. So I think it is the responsibility of the scientific community. Don't go and hug that body. Of course, then you may come in contact with some fluid and that kind. But you can go and touch and do whatever, wash your hand with soap, you're fine. There is one person is not releasing. You don't need a mask on a dead person. <laughs> so such a simple thing, if you rationalize, you feel ridiculous in a uh, in a uh, educated society, uh, how this is happening. So I think these are the things where scientific communities should take, uh, take a stand, come out and convince people what is right and what is wrong. If somebody has got COVID, I consider that guy is a hero because now A, uh, she or he will have antibodies. So uh, if need comes, they can go for plasma therapy. They are very good uh, to test their blood and figure out how they responded to immune and system, how what was, what kind of immunity they got and so on. And uh, more importantly, now they are like a stumbling block for the virus to spread. If a virus comes yeah, and yeah. hits them, we'll just stop there beyond, and go beyond that. So they are our heroes. They suffered. Maybe they should not have got infected. But once they got, then they are like that. So I think these are the things where the uh, scientific community has to come. You don't have to go and grow the virus in a BSL-3 lab. There are a lot more things a scientist can do because when you are speaking as a scientist, you are taken as authority. When they we win a match, then why uh, we get uh, uh, retired cricketers to come and give us a comment because we know they are experts, what they are saying, they will bring out the subtle features of the match and uh, we enjoy that. Similarly, when it is about the virus, then if scientists come and say people will, uh, uh, people will uh, uh, buy that and that is one way, uh, I mean, we are suffering is one thing, but at least we can take advantage of this and uh, uh, establish a better rapport with the society and become more important component uh, uh, of our society and uh, functioning of the system than just that you give me money I will do research and then don't ask me what I am doing right so that is not we we should be we uh, if we are using public money we should tell public what we are doing and when there is need we should come out and uh, so as I said it's not only uh, doing the research in the lab it is spreading the understanding what is known more important what is not known to to people we should tell people that there is no drug there is no vaccine the chance of having vaccine for uh, some time is very, very slim. So we cannot uh, wait for some slim uh, chance uh, and uh, suffer. Uh, drug may, may not come, it will take time. But there are ways that we can uh, manage this disease by wearing masks, by social distancing and uh, not uh, discriminating people who got infected and those sort of things. So there are lots of things we can do. Mm. That's true. Dr. Mishra, that leads me to the final question. 
Uh, what do you think is the single most important th- thing we need to be doing as Indians and as a country today? Oh, that is such a question. I, I don't think I'm capable to answer that. Uh, as an Indian, we should be doing our job with honesty. Is uh, is not today any time. That is the the best thing that we can do. And if we are convinced, then we should uh, help others. We should mm-hmm. not go and start talking, telling something without being convinced, without uh, without knowing something. So knowingly not spreading disinformation is extremely important. And learning, uh, at least educated people, they can learn. They know what is a good source of information, what is not a good source of information. Validate that. Go to WHO site, go to FDA sites, go to uh, 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 ICMR sites. There is information available. Read, spend some time, and then and not uh, uh, circulate uh, false messages and uh, I mean all kinds of things even. scientific community keeps doing that so scientists are no different they are also <laughs> human beings so the single important thing we should be doing is uh, uh, being compassionate that others may be in disadvantage so but from their side whether it's a migrant worker or whether it's infected person or whether it is a healthcare worker they all are having tough time of various uh, in different ways but our primary thing is to do Uh, uh to see that what we can do instead of sitting and criticizing uh, the policies the politicians the officers or everybody uh, and or chinese or whoever we have to focus on what we can do honestly that is one thing second thing is we take full responsibility that we will not uh, uh, get infected or uh, infect others if we do that then we have uh, already we are in good position to win this battle but we have to do that in all sincerity i don't know if there is otherwise a single formula that we should all go do this or do that yeah so on dr mishra it's a pleasure talking to you and uh, uh, thank you for making my viewers understand more about this uh, current pandemic situation and for sharing us your perspective about the situation and uh, thank you so much thank you thank you very much for uh, talking to me and it was a pleasure talking to you thank you sir yeah okay Bye bye bye